Well, welcome to yet another Monday Masterclass. Scott and I are looking forward to joining you. We've got a small group this morning. This, we're going to kind of depart from our normal hands-on, um, nuts and bolts sort of thing, and talk a little bit about major initiatives that a company might pursue. Now, there's one slide in here in particular that I think you'll find interesting, and I'll tell you when we get to it. But you know I am, I am physically incapable of doing a one-slide power, one PowerPoint presentation. So let me just give you a little build-up. We'll move quickly, see if you've got any questions. Hopefully, this will be somewhat helpful for you. So first of all, let's talk about what drives the value of a company. A lot of executives are very concerned about this. So imagine a company has an average price to earnings ratio of 20. And that's not, that's not far off today's averages, by the way. In other words, the price of the stock times the number of shares outstanding, the total value divided by the earnings in that year is about 20. Now, what this means is, only 5% of the value of that firm is coming from this year's earnings, right? I mean, that's what's driving it. 95% uh, is coming from the future growth. So let's imagine the total value, the market value of the firm is $100 million, and the earnings this year were $5 million. Well, there's your 20 to 1 ratio. But really, how did somebody... Why did the market value the company at $100 million if they only earned $5 million this year? Well, the other $95 million are the expectations, okay? So, but here's where, here's what gets interesting. <clears throat> so you would think that maybe this is how management would apportion their time. <clears throat> Turns out it's probably the reverse. Probably most of management spending all their time thinking about this year and not that much thinking about next year. Yet, if you look at some of the most successful companies that have the biggest uh, valuation, uh, they're really looking at uh, the future uh, of the firm here. And so really, it's about the, the future uh, growth. Amazon, Apple, Google, they're focusing on the future, not as much about just this year. And so I love this quote by Warren Buffett. Companies obtain the shareholder constituency that they seek and deserve. Because sometimes managers will say, oh, I got to focus just on this year because that's what I'll get beat up for if I don't do well. Well, maybe. All right. So if we then back up a little bit more and ask, well, how do you become an exceptional company with high valuations? A wonderful book by Rainer and Ahmed said there are three rules. First, better before cheaper. So if somebody says our, our path to success is focused on lowest price be a little bit uh, askance in your, in your view there. And then revenue before cost. So if somebody says, oh, we want to be you know, a low cost producer, eh, I'm not so sure. I think it's the growth that, that really makes a big difference here. And so that's what we're really looking at. And then interestingly enough, they said there are no other rules, okay? So better before cheaper, revenue before cost. So for some of you just joining us now, we're just kind of, we have, it was a really small group today. We're really talking about um, what initiatives companies should be focusing on. And I was just kind of explaining that, boy, if you really want to have a high value firm, here are some rules that really drive that. So let's think about this a little bit more. What do we mean by better or cheaper? Well, it means we need to innovate to deliver customer value. And what do we mean by focusing on revenue before cost? It means we've got to focus on growth. So let's think about this as our mission. Innovate to deliver customer value for profitable, sustainable growth. Now, I've been, anybody who will listen to me, they've been hearing this from me for several years now. I think a really good goal for a company is to understand and meet customer needs better than others. Now, some companies are still stuck back in the maximizing shareholder wealth, which is a lovely result, but it's a lousy goal. It's not, uh, it's not actionable. It's not inspirational. So bear with me for a little bit and say, and, and, if you will, imagine that this is what your company is going for. Understand and meet customer needs better than others. If you do this, then you're going to have more successful new products, higher revenue, higher profits, higher profitable growth. You'll have rapid, profitable, sustainable growth. And then the earnings, the, the stock market uh, valuation will follow like little goslings after their mother goose. So 
This is not inconsistent with what Peter Drucker said. The purpose of business isn't to make shareholders happy. The purpose of business is to create and keep customers. So if we imagine this is it, understand and meet customer needs. This is our path to rapid growth. In other words, we're going faster than the, than the markets we're serving. Profitable growth and most important, sustainable. So now here's what's gonna happen if we do this. So investors will be satisfied. Customers will wanna work with us. You'll have employees that have stable careers, rewarding careers. They're gonna focus on customer delight, not on the next uh, layoff. And best of all, you're gonna irritate your competition. So what's not to love about that? But most companies are missing on this target and missing rather significantly. So what I'd like to do now, this is the one slide that I think is valuable of everything I'm talking about today. Uh, so hang in there with me, this one. If your company said, yep, I'm there, Dan, I want to have growth that is rapid, that is profitable, and that is sustainable. And Dan, I got a whole bunch of initiatives to pick from. Which one should I pick from? Because think about it. Every company, you know, you got these initiatives. This year, we're going to do this. Next year, we're going to do that. How do they pick these crazy initiatives? And which ones are the right ones? And which ones will and will not satisfy this path to rapid, profitable, sustainable growth? Well, maybe your company says, you know what? We're all about improving quality. Well, that might help you grow a little faster. It certainly helped Toyota, you know, 30, 40 years ago, go faster than Chrysler. But I'm not so sure it's going to be a big thing today. Yes, you'll be more profitable. But is it really sustainable? I mean, it's kind of like the price of entry today. And once you get to zero defects, what do you do after that? You get diminishing returns. So I'm not so sure this one satisfies rapid, profitable, and sustainable. Hey, we're going to boost productivity. Well, yeah, but productivity, that's good. Do it. Go for it, man. But it's not really even about the top line, right? Productivity is about cost control. It might help you improve your profits. I would also say not only is there no top line impact, but you get diminishing returns. You ever see one of these lights out plans where it's so automated there aren't even any people in it anymore? I'm not sure what you do after that to improve your productivity. You reach a point of diminishing returns. Hey, let's cut costs. Well, that doesn't impact the revenue. And in fact, and it could help profits, yes. But it, it might not only be not sustainable, it might actually degrade your future growth if it isn't done thoughtfully and carefully. Hey, let's do some sales training. Yes, do sales training. That's wonderful. It probably will help you sell more. Uh, and it might help you sell more profitably. But you know what? It's not really sustainable over the long haul. I mean, you may have the most delightful, uh, gregarious uh, salespeople, ability to form rapport. They're just everybody's friend, friend of all the world. But you know, at a certain point in time, if your salespeople aren't able to deliver new value to the customers that they need to compete in the marketplace, this, this dog ain't going to hunt, as they say. What about customer intimacy? Well, that's kind of like the same thing as sales training. You may have wonderful relationships with your customers, but again, you better be delivering, delivering some new customer value at a certain point in time. Hey, let's expand globally. Well, that can help improve your, your top line revenue. Not so sure about profitability. Oftentimes in emerging regions, the profitability suffers, but you know what? We're starting to run out of undeveloped regions. There's a few left but there's not that many anymore. So I don't think that sustainability is gonna be there either. What about acquisitions? Hmm, well, that could definitely help us grow rapidly. It might even help us profitably if we're able to get some good synergies. But you know what? If we don't know how to grow these acquired companies afterwards, we're just building a house of cards. It's gonna collapse at some point. We've got cases of that. So here you see, the main failing of all these various initiatives are they don't give you long term over the many years a sustainable path to growth. The only way we can do this is understand and meet market customer needs better than others. So what my point would be on this is 
I would call this market facing innovation. So if you would put one more item in here and call it market facing innovation, I would say this is the main thing we need to focus on. And this kind of came through in a survey. We tried to find out by checking with a lot of people, over 500 responses on this thing. And we said, what about this notion of understanding and meeting customer needs better than others? And we tested 24 growth drivers to understand, to meet, and to, in some cases, do both, understand and meet. And we asked them, well, how important is this and how satisfied are you with it? Now, you can see how we label these on the right. And so here we're more important and here we're more satisfied. So if you think about it, the ones that people really wanted to improve are the ones in the upper left, things that were important that were not very well satisfied. And look at the huge amount of blue in here, a little bit of purple, but basically what these companies were saying, B2B professionals was this, we really want to work at getting better at improving the growth drivers to understand customer needs. Not so much the meat part. Look at W over there, that's gate review process. Look at S over there, that's a patent protection but they really want to get better at understanding customer needs. We did one more thing here, and I'll kind of close this out and see if there's any questions. We looked at those who said, I'm not, we're not very good at providing value to our customers in new products, and others who said they were good at it. And by the way, the survey showed the number one growth driver is the ability to deliver strong, differentiated value propositions. So now we've got two groups. And what we did was for all these growth drivers, on the left side, we, we put the average for the weak value providers. And on the right side, we put the average for the strong value providers. And everything had at least one, uh, one yeah, at least one, whoops, sorry, try that again, had at least one unit of differentiation. But can you see this? And that is that the ones with the biggest differentiators are probably ones we should pay attention to. So if you ask me, what separates the companies who are good at delivering value proposition, strong value proposition from those who are not? And that this is, according to the research, the number one way you drive profitable, sustainable, organic growth. Who, what differentiates them the most, the weak from the strong? It really is the top three. The ability to do good work in the front end of innovation, market concentration, which is, and I think I might have this, market concentration, which is market segmentation on steroids. Here's what I mean. Market segmentation is being able to isolate these clusters of customers of similar needs. Market concentration is saying, great, we've isolated them, now we're going to put an inordinate level of resources on those that are most attractive. That's market concentration. And the third one was the ability to do customer interviews. Now, again, this is all for B2B, the whole thing here. So how do we kind of close a loop on this whole thing? Let me see if I've got any more slides. Okay, that was the last one. So what we said was we want to think about the major initiatives your company is focusing on. So when you go back and talk to your business leaders, if they say the most important thing is quality or productivity or sales training or global expansion, don't tell them they shouldn't be doing those things. It's probably fine to be doing them. But Stephen Covey once said, the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. And what I'm saying is the number one overriding initiative that should never go away is market-facing innovation. With apologies to Mr. Tolkheim, it's the one ring to rule them all, market-facing innovation. And what I see is oftentimes companies get off on these other initiatives and they lose track of that major initiative. So if you can convince your company to focus on market-facing innovation, uh, you might also try to convince them to understand and meet customer needs better than others, and oh, by the way, the understand part probably needs a lot of work.
All right. Well, listen, thank you so much. And uh, we'll talk to you guys at a future Monday Masterclass, okay? Thanks now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, Rod. Bye. Thank you.